วัสดีค่ะ Good evening Welcome to Thai PBS English News Service Tonight you'll be with me รุ่งทิพย์ชนภาลัย Following widespread criticism of the 3G mobile services spectrum auction Today the Consumer Federation of Thailand has asked the Speaker of the Senate to remove all 11 members of the National Broadcasting and Telecommunication Commission or NBTC Meanwhile the NBTC's Telecom Committee has already endorsed the 3G bit results after meeting for more than three hours, the NBTC's five-man telecom committee voted 4-1 to one in favor of proceeding with the 3G auction result. Dr. Prabhupit Lista Pon Wongsa, the NBTC member representing consumer protection, was the one descending vote. The NBTC will sent the official result to the three winning bidders. The endorsement of this 3G bidding result does not require the approval of all 11 members of the NBTC. However, the 3G bidding produced far less revenue than anticipated, raising concerns and questions of transparency. Civil Networks have come up with a petition containing more than 55,000 signatures asking the, that the, senator, the Speaker of the Senate removes all 11 members of the NBTC. Almost 200 passengers left stranded in South Korea by PC Airlines arrived safely at Donmueung Airport earlier today after the Thai Embassy in Seoul had helped arrange emergency accommodation and special ticket prices for them. The 228 Thai passengers had been stranded at Incheon International Airport for over 24 hours as the airport refused to refuel the PC Airlines aircraft due to the Allies' failure to pay the fuel bills. The local Thai embassy dispatched its staff to assist the passengers. Early this morning, PC Airlines executives and staff stood in line to offer greetings, flowers and apologies for the inconvenience and frustration caused to passengers. Peter Chan, CEO of PC Airlines, expresses his heartfelt regrets over this incident, saying he had immediately sent his staff to help passengers by coordinating accommodation and alternative travel arrangements. A few passengers remain at the Korean airport, and he is trying to get them on their way quickly and safely. About 20 passengers bought tickets from another airline to return on their own. An official of the Tourism Business Registration Office was on hand at Donmung Airport to receive compliance against the tour company and assist in the process of claiming damages for about 40 passengers. The Anti-Corruption Network, or ANC, is asking some foreign business owners to be investigated about the siphoning of 16 billion baht to Hong Kong. They also revealed that a tour, agent, a tour agency located in Yamarat area is alleged to be involved in the contracts to transfer the funds. Comments made by sources at the ACN have triggered speculation about 16 billion baht being allegedly siphoned out of the rice pledging scheme and into an account or accounts in Hong Kong. Meanwhile, though Justice Minister Pacha Pomnok is insisting that there is no money being transferred to Hong Kong for laundering purposes, the ACN Secretary General Mong Khon Kit Suksintharanon said he was 80% certain that politicians has moved the funds through the underground banking system. The ACN claimed to have evidence of alleged corruption in major government projects, especially flood relief, the rice pledging scheme, educational supply purchases, and great imports of high-end luxury cars. The ACN Secretary General also confirmed that some of the 16 billion baht has already been transferred to France, arranged by a tour agency in the Yawarat area. Meanwhile, Pompong Noprit from Pure Thai Party, the spokesman submitted a request to the Department of Special Investigation asking them asking to them to investigate the ACN Secretary General Mong Khon Kiti Suk Sintharanon 
Police Colonel Dusadi Araya Wood, Deputy Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Justice, and Ong Ad Klam Paibun, a member of the Democrat Party, claiming that these four people made accusations regarding the movement of funds without providing any evidence and that this might affect national security. As Muslim tourists in Thailand's three southern provinces, Yala, Patani and Naratiwat continue to demand that all businesses close on Fridays, the government sector and all agencies involved are keen to build trust and confidence among the population in their security measures. In Yala, a new campaign called Happy Friday has been launched. The Happy Friday scheme has been launched in Yala province. It aims to encourage every business to open on Fridays by randomly awarding cash and gold prices to open shops. The scheme has received a positive response, but religious leaders and some locals believe it is solving symptoms of the problem and not addressing the root cause. These people would rather see the government build greater trust in the security measures instead. Yusso Samaer of the Muslim Committee of Patani's Central Mosque said most of the shop owners operate their businesses as usual. Small and medium enterprises or SMEs are considered heart and soul of the Thai business sector. Earlier I spoke with Jilabun with Yasing of the Thai Lifestyle Products Federation and chairman of the Arts and Gifts Industrial Federation and Patiya Pasu Jarat Salat Pong, president of the Home Decorative Design Association, who discussed the advantages and problems of SMEs in Thailand in preparation for membership of the AEC. Uh. I think we were a strong point of us is the design, mm. right? But uh, now we are number one reader of uh, ASEAN by design products right. and the lifestyle product federation mm -hmm. and lifestyle product uh, or from the entrepreneur in a uh, lifestyle entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also the SME groups also like facing a lot of difficulties, for example, uh, the flood and also mm -hmm. the minimum wage. Yes. So how do you um, try to overcome this crisis? Uh, now we, all of them, they help themselves, but mm -hmm. really, really say that we need, we need some help from our government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but because the, this crisis have a lot of problem from our our member, mm -hmm. about ten percent of our member they close the company. Yeah, mm -hmm. already the closed. Close down. Yeah, already closed and no more in this business. Yeah, oh, they, they move out. Or yeah, they move out to the other. I don't know. Maybe some some somebody disappear, mm -hmm. and nobody can help. We need, I hope that maybe have someone in the government have heard us, hear mm. us about this and then help They're trying to, you know, yes. help yeah. you guys. Yes. But then, we don't, don't want to get it free. Yeah, don't get it free, <laughs> but you we need to get it free, uh, but some the chance yeah, of support. But the financial support is very important. Yes. So, and, and the liquidity. How do you manage and how do you... You know what? What kind of Swiper? assistance? Yes. <laughs> yeah. What kind of assistance? You, you know, financial assistance that you would like. But right now, I think it's uh, the the finance uh, for the government is very strict. But it's the same in the same policy than the uh, what is it the uh, public. But uh, than before. Yeah, than before. But but right now, I think this if you are, you give some special. Uh, Condition. Mm. I think that is the keep me can can survive. Now mm -hmm. we talk about we need to run, but we need to survive in. in but that means that the last time when they try to help, it didn't work. Yeah, I think uh, the policy start from May. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, it's on October. process. Yeah, October, not on process. Right. Yeah. Not on process. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway, so now, as we can see, like you have all the very interesting products and beautiful, you know, high quality products. Now, these are uh, big and beer edge. Yes. Yes. So tell us where and when that we can go and do some um, shopping. From 20 to 21 is uh, from our public days. Mm -hmm. Everybody can shop in that time. Right. Or even uh, everybody can visit now to have a look at our product mm -hmm. and then maybe you can uh, choose someone but cannot buy <laughs> at least two or three days except right. the public day. But Saturday and Sunday is a day that is open for public. Yesterday afternoon, hundreds of thousands of Cambodian mourners tearfully welcomed the arrival of the body of their revered former King Narodom Sihanouk who died of heart failure in Beijing on Monday.
Cambodian King Norodom Sihamoni, former Queen Norodom Mononith and Prime Minister Hun Sen brought home the former king's body from Beijing by Air China. Chinese State Councillor Dai Bingguo also escorted the coffin to Cambodia. The body arrived at 3 p.m. local time yesterday, marking the official start of a week of mourning. At a traditional ceremony held at the Phnom Penh International Airport, 90 Buddhist monks chanted prayers for the soul of the deceased king before the body was moved onto a swan-shaped vehicle. The convoy of the former king's body then proceeded to the royal palace. Over 100,000 sympathizers wearing white shirts pinned with black ribbons in a sign of mourning flanked the 10-kilometer route. Most of the mourners cried while others were silently saddened upon seeing the convoy of the king's body. You know for Cambodia the king father is the symbol of the country. He is the one, the man who brought Cambodia to the new age of the 20th century, uh, liberate the country, develop the country. That's why after that when we have also the tragic history, he name is intimidate link with the Cambodian history. That's why for Cambodia the king is everything for them. The entire Cambodian nation is in mourning. Flags will be flying at half-mast throughout the week, which has been designated as a period of mourning. Citizens may also pin a small black piece of cloth to their shirts as a sign of remembrance of their former leader. All of the country's 13 television channels and 101 radio stations cancelled their daily programs to focus their broadcasts on Sihanouk. Programs include documentaries which feature the late king's royal crusades and the achievements he made during his lifetime, since he first reigned over the country in 1941. According to an official schedule, the body of the king will be exhibited for at least three months at the royal palace before it is cremated. The former king wrote in a royal letter in January this year that he wanted his body to be cremated instead of being buried and that his ashes should be placed in an urn, preferably made of gold, and placed in a stupa at the country's royal palace. On Tuesday, Prime Minister Hun Sen announced the cancellation of the country's annual water festival, which had been scheduled for November the 27th through 29th. The water festival is the Southeast Asian nation's largest annual festival. Around three million Cambodians, including many from the country's rural areas, annually converge in the capital city of Phnom Penh to enjoy the regatta. Hugh Adams, Thai PBS. Thank you, Kun Hugh. China and South Korea have been condemned a visit today by two Japanese ministers to a controversial shrine for war dead. The minister's pilgrimage to the Yasukuni Shrine, seen by many in the region as a symbol of Japan's wartime militarism, came a day after a visit by Japan's main opposition party leader and possible next prime minister, Shinzo Abe. Land Minister Yuichiro Hata and a Postal Service Privatization Minister Mikio Shimoji were among a group of non-partisan lawmakers visiting the shrine during the autumn festival. Fourteen Japanese wartime leaders convicted as crime as war criminals are honored at the shrine along the Arthur War dead. Hatha told reporters his visit was private and not part of a state visit, but China's foreign ministry called on the Japanese politicians to face up to the international community. Chinese Foreign Ministry said that China's position on this issue has been clear-cut and consistent. We urge the Japanese side to face squarely and reflect upon history and strictly abide by its solemn statements and pledge regarding historical issues and face the international community in a responsible manner. She knows Japanese relations have soared sharply in the past month when a roar over disputed islands badly hurt trade and led to violent anti-Japanese protests across China. Ties have been overshadowed by, for years by what Beijing says has been Tokyo's refusal to admit to wartime atrocities committed by Japanese soldiers in the country between 1931 and 1945. And that wraps up tonight's edition of Thai PBS English News Service. Thank you for watching. I'm Rung Pip Chuan Have a good night. สวัสดีค่ะ